All right, hello and welcome to yet another Thursday on Defense of the Patients. We like to call this Theory Crafting Thursday. I am here with my co-host, Roland. Hello, and yes, I do like to call it Theory Crafting Thursdays, because that's what it is, sir. Yeah, well, depending on the day, it's Theory <laughs> Craft Thursdays or Theory Crafting Thursdays. Yes, it's true. So, uh, you know, someday we'll I think you started the ing. I've always looked at it as Theory Craft Thursday. Or was it... Maybe I, I put the ing on there. I look at Cyphus for like record. Like what? Cyphus, tell me, validate. Yeah, we got producer Cyphus in the house tonight. Not on a microphone, but he'll add yep. his his two bits. Yep, and then Feel more free. importantly, we have our illustrious guest. Uh, we proud. have a guest. We we do have a guest. It's a first, I know. But uh, <laughs> yeah, we we have proud, good friend of mine. He's going to be helping us out tonight. Yeah. Wh- hey, proud. I've got a question for you, bud. Where the fuck have you been, I, dude, during during this? We've had Ursi on, on this side. Why aren't you coming over hanging out with us, dude? You too that's, a, that's a fair question. Are you too Not good with that lone druid? Much. Or what? A little bit too good with lone druid. He <laughs> doesn't do that much for you, turns out, which we'll get into later. But... Uh, yeah, pretty pretty busy. Uh, I'm actually on my school's Dota team right now, so qu- not not quite oh, enough time wow. to spread myself too too thin. CIS? Like, are you uh, the, a, regis- Have you registered for? Yeah, like, with, C- the, with the CSL. Oh, uh, oh, CSL. CSL. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, oh my god, dude, yeah, it's sick, honestly. that's badass. What what school do you go to? So we can root so for your school. I just transferred to UCSC, uh, UC Santa Cruz, um, and I'm on their B team. But shit, ask me. I think we're a little better than the A team. So. We'll see how we all do. Uh, Holy how well we fuck! Well, it's it's a privilege to meet you, sir. Uh, <laughs> I know. You're the closest famous. to famous I uh, I have come to uh, have on the show. I'm a little nervous now. Uh, okay, awesome. sorry. We'll get over it quickly. I'm sure. <laughs> I almost scrimmed with Boreal once. Just saying. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, yeah, slow pretty, down, pretty dude. Tough here, I know. Slow but... down. Slow down. God. Gonna steal all our fans away, man. (laughs) Yeah, really. (laughs) So so, uh, for this week, what we're doing, because uh, I may or may not have spoken about this on some show or uh, cast or whatever, but Proud is our resident Lone Druid player, for better or worse, Um, definitely depending on the patch. And um, so tonight we're going to be doing a Lone Druid combo. It's going to be Lone Druid Shadow Shaman, which we definitely think has potential. Uh, I know, Proud, you've run this before, right? Yeah, yeah, I had a friend who I would do that with a lot in solo queue and get a lot of MMR that way. Yeah, I guess you know, party queue at that point, but you know. Uh, yeah, well, you know, it's mixed anyway, so it's solo queue for some, party for others. MMR is um, MMR, you know? Well, yeah, more or less, more or less. And uh, yeah, so I, I assume it's Skrunk who we're talking about, who's the Shadow Shaman player, and I will hope to. Yeah. I will be playing with you tonight. Obviously, we don't have a fourth guest, so uh, you'll. That, you know, I did that for a reason, Ursi. Uh, okay. I feel like it I gets it. it can get a little crowded with four. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? And I thought it'd be nice to uh, have three for uh, this episode, and especially because we hear about Proud all the time. I mean, I've I've heard about this guy Proud for like eight months now, where you're like, yeah, I have a friend who I play with named Proud. He's good at Lone Druid. That was back when I was playing Lone Druid. Uh, mm-hmm. And you noticed, and it's like now we got proud on, so I wanted to give him the proper, uh, you know. Plus, he's nowhere near either of your MMRs. Uh, no, he's 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 only like four hundred higher than Ursi. He's for like forty four, and Ursi's like four, right? Yeah, I don't know what oh. are right now, proud. I'm like yeah, right 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 now I'm about forty four. I go between like four three and four six, depending on the week. Yeah, I'm like uh, what is it? My solo right now is forty one, and my party is like forty two. So oh, yeah, wow. we're right around the same range. Yeah. You were um, what were you talking about then, Cyphus? What? Oh, yeah, even if you times my MMR by two, it doesn't equal one of their MMRs. So, uh, I'm close, though. It's like, I'm almost half as good well, as them. I, I think you'd be, uh, like, a few points higher than me. But, uh, a few uh, points, yeah. I got, Oh, yeah, 43 or so, I guess. But that's solo. Anyway, sorry. Go on. Yeah. I did not mean to take the train off the tracks, dude. Um, yes, we were on tracks. What were those tracks? All right, well... The, anyway, the Lone couple. Druid Shadow Shaman, really. I mean, it's it's cool, but... I mean, before the show, we were talking a little bit, or I, I guess, was talking about why it's it's cool with Lone Druid. So... Yes, so uh, one of the nice things is uh, Lone Druid, he is, uh, as Proud, I'm sure, will tell us, he's pretty weak in general because of some inherent issues with the hero. But Shadow Shaman, and he got a minor buff this patch, but then Shadow Shaman also, he got what I would th- what I would call huge. a pretty significant buff. Yeah, huge buff. Um, and he is a hero you do not see very regularly at high levels of play because he has mobility issues and he requires 
Ars items and stuff. And so I think this pairing should be interesting, and like you touched on, it has a ton of push potential. Mm -hmm. So that's going to be our basic goal, is uh, a lot of like early six, you hit six, and then you just, between the bear and Shadow Shaman wards, you're just going to annihilate towers. And you can you can manage to accomplish a lot without like investing some crazy combo um, that's hit or miss. It's very like consistent. Yeah, also uh, I feel like the shackle is huge for more attacks that the bear is getting on the enemy for more chances for entangle and that double stun you know uh where you can hold somebody in place for an extremely long time uh based on obviously i, I don't think it's pseudo random on the bear is it isn't no, it like a 20 percent? No, it's, not. it's, it's like, like 20 percent, and then that 20 percent is going to come whenever the hell it wants to yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah it doesn't feel like it, it it, I don't yeah. know. I've had some. Great yeah, it's it's, uh, it's it's not like you know like a Lena where you just need a shadow demon setup and then you know for half a second you get the stun. It's done. <laughs> Something like sh uh, shackles. You get like a nice long four seconds where like all right, you'll probably you'll you'll have the time to get an entangle at that point. Yeah, yeah. and and pray it's not diminish returns. You don't get the entangle during the shackle. Oh, exactly. But, yeah. you know, well, even if it does, the damage is still out there, and you got to kill pretty pretty reliable. Yeah. Also, I mean, the, one of the other nice things is uh, the bear. When you have both your buffs on it, the what is it? Battle cry and um, yeah. The, the since, armor since they're both melee heroes, if something's moving during the battle cry, you'll lose like half the potential damage from the the DPS you get from the extra, you know, like hundred. So if you have something in place for about two seconds, you get two swipes off from the bear and the uh, the hero. You got to kill. Yeah, that's all. It's a lot of damage potentially, potentially. And uh, like we said, Star Shaman, the shackle got buffed significantly i believe what was it it was a cooldown reduction it's by six like, seconds uh, yeah it was wasn't it, it, it wasn't 18, it 12 to 12. 6 yeah, or, yeah. it was 18 to 12 oh 18 to 12 okay yeah no. yeah it's, it's, it was six it's, that would be wild it's 10 seconds i know the cooldown right now is 10 oh, oh it's 10 seconds at level one does it diminish or is it does it stay the same at any level it stays the same yeah it's it, wow maybe it was an eight second uh anyway oh, it feels eight, it feels way more frequent i'm seeing blink dagger shadow shamans now where yep. they're just like, ba blink, sh shackle, and it's like, what the fuck, dude? And then you <laughs> yeah. like walk a little further, and then he's like, no, nope, blink, shackle. You're just like, dude, just let me go. Like, you can't kill me, and I obviously can't kill you. Like, I don't know. It, it's been crazy, the amount of yeah. blink. Uh, blink has pretty much always been core on the hero. One of the big problems hmm. Shadow Shaman has is that he's very immobile. Uh, I, don't, I don't know his uh, move speed off the top of my head, but I know it's not good. And so it's like 280. Yeah, exactly. Like awful like that. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. 285. There we go. Um, 285. 285. Yeah. That's uh, miserable. Yeah. Why like, even add the five? You know what I mean? It's just like, if you're going to fuck the hero, just put him at 280. You know what I mean? Well, that's just like, be honest about it. It's shit. <laughs> yeah. Be honest. He's like a CM. Right? <laughs> yeah. I know. Uh, except without all the, like the good things. But he's CM. got a tool belt that is huge, dude. Like yep. his tool belt is like, what you need? I got, I got damage. I got, I got Sable. lockdown. <laughs> I got push. What do you need? Uh, yeah. Add heal to that hero, dude. And he's, he's literally every support. He's yeah. I mean, he's, very similar to CM when you think about it, but he yeah. doesn't give the aura. But he does give a ton of push, which is nice. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so one of the advantages we're going to have is that with Lone Druid, who can easily rotate into the jungle, Shadow Shaman can get some net worth, uh, assuming he doesn't like get killed. But he can farm the lane, he can get an early 6, he can get a good amount of XP, so that he can satisfy his need for items and his need for XP while still like being a support, because normally... With some other carries, like, I don't know, like a, let's say a Spectre that's very greedy carry, you wouldn't be able to do this kind of method where they wouldn't rotate into the jungle and be able to be self-sufficient like that. So that's one of the big advantages to this. And you see that in a lot of duo lanes, um, especially like duo lane safe lanes, although we'll probably be off laning this, um, is that it works because the carry can just rotate into the jungle and take stacks or do whatever. Also a lot of mids, like duo mids, stuff like that. Yeah. Um, or any stacking hero, really. Like Shadow Fiend comes to mind. Like the classic thing is Shadow Fiend either takes stacks made by supports or stacks and takes them. And while he's taking the stacks and getting that, then, you know, your roaming Earthshaker or what have you takes the goes mid. to mid and they yeah. take mid and, again, I, hopefully don't die. <laughs> I do that with Storm Spirit a lot where it's like, hey, exactly. yo, I've got, because I'd like to stack uh, at the uh, 53, 1 minute 53, 2 minute 53, meet 3 minute 53. So I have like a 5 stack at the hard if I'm Radiant. Uh, yeah. I don't do it on Dire. But anyway, then I tell somebody to come. But I have a random thought for you, for both of you guys, that uh, just that I kind of realized today, because I played them both in succession. This literally has nothing to do with the lane combo and is ridiculous that I'm even bringing it up. 
You know what two heroes are a lot alike in in one interaction? Wind Ranger and Pugna with Decrepify and then the Life Steal and then Shackle and Focus Fire. I was I played Pugna and then I played Wind Ranger and I'm like, oh my god, these are like almost the same. Like the this little tidbit is like it felt the exact same. The interactions I were I was having. Uh-huh. Uh, do you have anything to add on that? I know that's a really weird thought. Like I it, was, it, it would be something I'd bring up to you and mumble, Ursi. Yeah, I mean, like you're right that both are. It's good like both and... four seconds. Like they're they're decrepified for four seconds, so they can't really do anything to you while you're life draining them. They're shackle yeah, I... shotted for four seconds. They can't really do anything to you while they're while they're focus getting focus fired. You know. Yeah. I don't know. It was a weird thought that I had that I was like, wow. I mean, it I makes sense. Kind of. I think it kind of highlights the difference between the two here is viability because like decrepify pugna ulti yeah it's the kind of channeled thing but you can do something about being decrepified you can do shit while you're being decrepified and mm-hmm. i mean you can bkb and it's all done wind runner like if you get shackle shot you can't do anything by definition of being stunned and you can't like bkb or really do but, anything but people can the fuck with the wind ranger but they can also fuck with the pugna see yeah, these so are the thoughts yeah. that go through a, a 2.15k uh, player's mind <laughs> where i'm like wow dude i'm good at pugna and wind ranger because of this because I'm able well, to yeah. click on them and then click on them again. And I don't, I don't know. I just thought the... Kind of like... Mean, it make, Mur- it makes sense. Murana Arrow and Jakiro Ice Path, I feel, are very similar. Uh, yeah. You Even know? Like, the way that... Like, Murana Arrow and any stun, that's the idea. Yeah, well, Murana... Oh, I mean... Well, the way you line it up, you know? How you have the Ice Path where you have to... Oh, gotcha. You know, like, the way you anticipate an Ice Path is similar to the way I anticipate an Arrow. Gotcha, yeah. I thought you meant as, like, a combination, like, the Jakiro stuns. No. You have- like, when I'm playing Jakiro, like, I feel like that's why I, when I play Murana, I can hit arrows is because I played so much Jakiro. That, like, you're trying to catch somebody in the tail end of that, in that ice wall or whatever the fuck. I know, I just I was totally just to play arrow to punch up, because you can, yeah. you know, like, dodge it with the uh, standby creeps and yeah. stuff. But and I'm not a Pudge player. Absolute Ugh. garbage if do, you don't land them. Do you play <laughs> Pudge, Proud? God no! Holy shit! Okay, I'm glad you're not. I'm not, glad you're not one of those actually, guys. Actually, my my lone druid, my lone druid master, which I actually have, um, is also like an obscenely good pudge player, and he does like pudge wisp in the off lane. He made a video on Reddit that got like you know views. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. it got Reddit traffic. Wisp. Yeah, <clears throat> wisp off lane combos. Don't don't screw with that. That's crazy stuff. Oh, I know. Yeah, we we did one last week, or no, we did two weeks uh, ago. A pudge. We combo. haven't done any wisp. We did pudge. Oh, pudge. Uh, Omni. Pudge Omni was No, great. we did Pudge Lich. We've or, always, no, we didn't. Like, oh, it was Pudge Omni. You're right. God. Sorry. Yeah, we haven't done any Wisp combos because... No. And Korean Barbecue, uh, as a callback, he raised a very good point about Wisp combos, which we have been very tempted to do. Yes. But Wisp is such a hero that... And I know, uh, Roland, you've been playing a lot of Wisp, so you'll have mm-hmm. some good input on this, I'm sure. But Wisp is a hero that really, like, he makes anybody strong, or it makes anybody strong. I don't know if it's a gendered ball of light. But, um, yeah, I feel like he doesn't make like, okay, so the, remember the OD Wisp that he was talking about? Uh, yeah, yes. uh, OD Wisp kind of doesn't make sense to me because OD kind of already has like a built in Wisp with his, uh, at least for mana. And I feel like Wisp is, in most cases, unless shit goes bad, and yes, you do a lot of healing, it's the mana that's important with, with Wisp that I've noticed. It's so, like you play Tiny uh, IO, right? Like, I'm not usually needing to heal Tiny as much as I'm needing to just provide him with a shitload of mana so he can do his combo every yeah, 14 farm seconds. And, and farm, yeah. yeah and well, that's why Soul Ring Wisp is so wild. I yeah. forget if it was Proud or Skrunk that uh, like first opened my eyes to Soul Ring Wisp. Which is really I cool. Playing Wisp. Because uh, you're Skrunk's a Soul Ring hater, so it was probably me. Okay, yeah, but because mm-hmm. I know you're you both of you actually are big Tiny players. Although I've also yeah. grown to love Tiny, but so for a while we were running Wisp Tiny for better or worse. Oh, okay, and uh, yeah. Soul Ring Wisp is wild. Like that's so good because they get the mana. Like, Soul the Ring Wisp bottle. Instantly. Yeah, oh, um, I love it. And then you and, just pop spirits, dude, right after they get their mana. And and, yeah. and you don't really lose anything. Because you, you should, like... Another thing that I've noticed with Wisp is why the fuck are spirits ever not turned on? Like, your spirits should pretty much all, constantly be on cooldown. Because I don't want to have to overpower to heal you. I mean, ideally, I'd like to be able to use some of my mana without wasting it, you know, to give you more attack speed, because sometimes you don't even need the attack speed. Mm-hmm. So I'd like to, you know, pop spirits early on so I and give mana that way instead of using, you know, my slowly leaking my mana so you can get some ability. 
Yeah, I mean, kind of, because I mean, the slowly leaking your mana thing is balanced in that, like, the rate at which you leak is equivalent, basically, to the rate at which you regen. So it balances out, so they're regening while you're draining and regening, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. Which I make and, the mistake of leveling that up, which it hurts you more, I believe, the more you level it up. I, I'm not sure. Does you're, it? Well, generally, you're Doesn't supposed it? to level it up eventually. You max, generally, what you see I is max. max spirits. Yeah, you max spirits first, mm -hmm. and you only keep one level in tether. Yep. And a lot of wisps, they don't even get the next three levels in tether until like 23, 24, 25. Yeah. Because it's like yeah. the amount you gain from it is negligible well it's all about like oh so the io should be doing loop-de-loops -loops around the hero so it slows them down like that's like really the big benefit in upgrading tether it's yeah like, and it's the slow that it provides if you, you you know cross your tether over something yeah boy i remember when that used to stun that was wild stuff really jesus that's a, that's og i've never that that's insane oh that, that was, was when yeah. uh, chaos night wisp was the thing because you could reality rift and get an automatic stun oh <laughs> that's why ck I, I was always wondering about that. I was like, why is it yeah. CK that everybody talks about so good? It also works just kind of like the tempo of the, the hero stun. goes well with just like getting ganks to get kills instead of actually having to like farm yeah. lane and stuff. But, and he has yeah. huge mana problems. Yeah. And yeah. surviving problems. And Natural other. synergies aside though, having a free stun every time you reality rift is pretty solid. Yeah. I, yeah. Although I, I forget exactly how long the stun was, but it wasn't very long. It was like maybe a second and a half at most. But yeah. And you can only get it like once per tether, but... That's, was yeah, it when a tether would break? Is that how no, you would do it? No, it's tether would cross the just enemy. whenever oh. you crossed it. And reality oh, okay. rift puts you on the other side of the person you use it on. Oh, so it would okay. automatically put it between you and the wisp, which is just, yeah. It's just super really, fucking really, cool. Really, really it was wild. Weird. That is we wild. Will, you know, maybe we'll find a client from like 6.1 and <laughs> we'll run that combo some week <laughs> against bots. Oh my god, because I remember people, what was that, like around TI2? TI it was old. <laughs> like in I my know, professional opinion, it was old. I, I know it's old great. because, I, yeah, I remember people talking about CKIO. Nobody ever told me about this like wisp stun from the you know tether thing, uh, and it all makes sense now because I was like, I guess I was like, why not like Sven instead then? Like CK is good, yeah, but like CKs also seem stationary to me. That like if he if he hits Phantasm, he probably wants to stay there. You know what I mean? Yeah. Instead of we, go roam around with me. So. Yeah, you see Wisp combos a lot with melee heroes too because the inherent hero, the inherent problems with, with melee heroes is that they get kited. So like yeah. a hero like, you know, Wraith King or Ursa or whoever, if you could just kite a melee hero, you're going to have an easy life and they literally can't damage you. So that's why you see a lot of the Wisp combos are with a hero that needs move speed. Whereas like, you know, a Wisp with like a Drow is, you know, it's okay. I mean, you get attack speed and stuff, well, but it just, it's not nearly... To the point of what we were saying, is Wisp makes everybody better. That's the yeah. thing about Wisp combos. Exactly. That's like to bring us bring back the full circle is any hero likes having a Wisp. Like even a, like I don't know like when I'm playing a Wisp game and Tiny's fine and the support's really low, uh, and then I just tether to him and I hit my Greaves and do a bottle mm -hmm. charge or something. That support is like God. It's fucking awesome to have a Wisp on the team. Yeah. You know yeah, what so I mean? that, that's like it's just like everybody a, loves it, you know. Yeah, in a very so long-winded, even more long circle, or you know, full, full circle, circle. I'll say long full circle. Wisp Lone Druid does not really care about a Wisp on his team. Yeah, you oh, can't yeah, tether to are... bear, so or oh, can really? you? Can, uh, that, you should be able to. I'm pretty sure you can because you can. I mean, tether if you can, yeah, if you can tether a creep, yeah, but it's just I don't know. It's it's not so great. The oh, yeah. overcharge is like makes you stronger and makes you take less damage, but you don't really care because your hero is getting killed, but your hero doesn't need to get faster, and it's yeah. Yeah, but yeah, there so. are some heroes that are exceptions, but for the most part, like it's really easy to do a hundred different IO combos. You know what yeah. I mean? So, <laughs> so again, as like a very long way of saying it, that's why we're not doing the like obvious like Wisp combos because they're fun yeah. and like it's very good, but you know, a not a lot of people know how to play Wisp. B, I don't want to induce people into starting to feed on Wisp by by uh, America of my show. I won't do it in solo anymore. I, no. I, I wanted to practice. I wanted to get better with Wisp, but I won't do it in solo anymore because I literally, I can't trust people. I like I will tell them, I'll be like, okay, stop. And then I ping the minimap on where we are. And I then I ping where we're going. And I'm like, if you move, it'll break the tether. Like I have to literally explain this. This is just not like common knowledge. And it's like, we're going to go kill this guy up there. And, and it's like, okay, okay, dude. And then I go to the mini map and I go up there and I, t I, I relocate up there and it's just me. And I'm like, dude, what are you doing? He's like, I was walking up there. 
it's like, oh my fucking god, like, and I'm dead, yeah. and it's just, I can't, I won't do it anymore. But if yeah, I'm playing it, with my boy Gothier, <laughs> yeah, dude, yep. I love it. Uh, yeah, I have the same thing. I, uh, it's uh, like, I think of it as like Oracle Syndrome almost. Like, I don't play Wisp, I like Wisp a lot, actually. And there are a lot of opportunities in solo queue where, like, I want to play him. But at the same time, like, I, people, even if they know, like, intuitively, they know how the hero works and all that. It's like you need to have good communication with your partner. So it's dangerous to do in solo queue. And then, yeah, like lower to mid tiers and even high tiers, people either consciously or unconsciously don't know how the hero works. So they will like unintentionally break tethers and all kinds of things can go wrong. Um, I hate it when they so. have blink daggers. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah. uh, it's even playing with people that you have good communication with, like people say that it, the IO is the one that does all the work, but I, I disagree with that. It, it requires, like, you know, at both parties thinking. Like, mm -hmm. okay, if I blink and break this tether, he just barely tethered onto me, which means there's going to be, like, a 10-second cooldown before tether happens again. Yep. And that and people, what the fuck, IO? And it's like, dude, you're the one that broke the fucking tether when I, right <laughs> when I tethered on you. Can't heal you unless we're tethered. Like, that's how this whole thing works. Yep. So it's good to get into other heroes on Theorycraft Thursday, just Absolutely. so people know. Io is a weird hero. I think he's one of those heroes that when you click random, you're like, oh, fuck, it's Io. Fuck. Yeah. Oh, fuck, I re-randomed Io. Oh, fuck. Like, what are we going to do? We lose. Uh, which, I don't know. I think I, he's a cool ball of energy. And he's definitely cool. He has a lot of potential, too. Like, he's one of those heroes I think of when I think of, like, if you're going to spam a hero and think, like, I'm just going to sit, and for the next hundred games, I'm going to learn how to play this hero. I think I was a really good hero for that position. Like, there are yeah. some other versatile heroes, like Kunkka or, you know, whoever that you think, or Earth yeah. Spirit is the class or classic one. Yeah, Invoker. Like, you could just play 100, heroes, 100 games of that hero. You're going to have really noticeable gains. And I think Wisp is really cool for that. But mm. it definitely, there are some problems just with, like, you know, if people don't understand how your hero works or they're not used to playing with it because he's not played often, mm -hmm. then you're going to have some problems. No matter how well you execute, if you're confusing your teammates, like, that's not productive. Yeah. Like, you are truly a full support. Like, you literally have an, uh, an inability that hurts you. You know what I mean? <laughs> that hurts you to help somebody. Uh, yeah. like, the, like every other support, like, Shadow Shaman can always buy Boots of Travel and, like, put his wards on towers when lanes are pushed and stuff, and, like, do his own little things. As I don't know, I can't gank, I can't do anything, like, I can throw my spirits out and hope to hit you, uh, as you're running away, with the help of a friend. So, yeah, I can't do it in solo. And, All right, and well, you me know, on my soapbox right there. <laughs> yeah, as I as wish as... I could. I wish I could. We'll see. Man, you know, a few hundred MMR points later, I'm sure you'll uh, you'll be the Wisp expert. But anyway, back to tie it into, you know, Lone Druid Shadow Shaman. Which um, I think we've gone full long circle back we have to... certainly. Yes. Uh, the circle is very long. What's the plan? Um, Let's talk. I, this is this is kind of weird, Ursi, because usually you're giving orders. I think it... You guys need to discuss what's your build... What are your builds going to be? What are you scared to see? What are, like, what what is the bane of Lone Druid Shadow Shaman? Okay. Well, well, the bane of Lone Druid Shadow Shaman is a game going past 35 minutes without <laughs> a ridiculous advantage. Uh, it's kind of the, that's kind of every game on Lone Druid, as much as I hate to say it. It oh. used to be you could take it late with a kind of basher variant where you just lock people down and you just are a living fiend script. But at this point, Power Creep has kind of got to the point where you, you just can't really deny it. You can't take it too late as a, as a Lone Druid. Yeah, so I, th I think that's a really valuable point, actually. Uh, so, like, just to bullet down, because Lone Druid is not a hero people see often because of his difficulty and because he's not super strong right now so proud like what are his key weaknesses that like prevent him from being a strong hero and prevent him from being in the meta so one thing is his bear looks really strong on paper but then once you take it to late game 2700 health doesn't count that much and then 2700 health of you know not having um stack gain so you don't have this like large creeping mound of agility that's like just kind of building over the course of the game and giving you more armor so the armor that you that your bear has is really just kind of stuck there for the entire game. You can get a couple items like AC to build it up a little bit, but you really your bear's just not gonna have a lot of armor. So the bear is kind of balanced around being this giant mass of like flesh that can't be killed and it's just not worth touching. And then once that stops being true, you're left with something with poor scaling damage because the bear does creep damage, which does about 70, well, its type of damage is normal, which is 75% against heroes. So its damage doesn't scale super well. And it, its defenses don't scale very well. 
and it doesn't really have any good gap closers or anything like that. So, like, the patch where Sniper was strong, if Sniper was in the game, he would just right-click the bear, and the bear would be Scottied, and it, it's not going to get BKB, not that it matters against Scotty, and then slowed, and then stunned, and it's just not going to do anything. So if once you get to the point where people can turn around and right-click your bear, your hero is basically done. And the only way that you can kind of fight through that is if you get a bunch of bashers on both your hero and the bear and hope that you can, like, kind of close the gap and then just spam bash people down, and then they can't really counterattack you. But uh, unless you can get to that point, you really, really can't touch it late game. Well, what about the... Oh, sorry, go ahead. Oh, no, no, go, go on. I was going to ask you about the lonely druid uh, and what that's all about. <laughs> oh, uh, Ur- man, Ur- this, brought this, this up. <laughs> um. So then you've got a hero who does nothing that a drow ranger doesn't. That's the, it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> really? A uh, ranger that moves faster. Uh, yeah, lonely druid. That's like a Dota one thing, and like that's a. It's one of those. Ugh, okay. Um, so you I, don't get not, the bear at all. Is what lonely druid is about, right? Yes. And, <laughs> um, I love the name. Um, yeah, I mean it's like a fun build in theory. You're like, oh well, you're super fast but like you suck and you're garbage so, like, <laughs> and you don't like, get 100 agility when you Yasha. turn level six <laughs> yeah it's uh, it's just one of those things i yeah my friend played around with that build for like i don't know a dozen games and it was a terrible dozen games <laughs> i think if you really wanted to make that work i had a few theories about trying to make this hero viable for a while and there's one that was kind of related to that that's not too bad but if you go like uh this kind of to the glove of haste got buffed a while back to be from 15 to 20 attack speed on 500 gold which is like an absurd amount of efficiency so if you did want to you could like level up your bear but like not focus items on it just get like phase boots orb of venom and then just like i don't know four gloves of haste something absurd like that Uh and then the bear could actually be pretty viable in terms of like zoning for you and getting entangles off like that's that's some efficient attack speed that's like you know 80 attack speed for the price of a hyperstone and hyperstone's already efficient as hell so you could go something like, I don't know, like S&Y treads or something on, on Scylla and then get, you know, like Orb of Venom and a bunch of Gloves of Haste on your bear. And like you could kind of do something with that. It's, <laughs> it wouldn't be too awful, but it's, uh, it's still, you know, would not recommend. It doesn't have my seal of approval. Yeah, I think like it's one of those builds where like at best it's like just a slightly worse lone druid. Like it's one of those things where like you might win with it, but then you get that like logical fallacy in your mind. You're like, oh, well, I won with this. It must be good. But it's yeah. like, well, you won despite your build. Um, so, yeah, I mean, <laughs> maybe some, someday in the future, if one oh, gets man. off to the... I think there's some very <laughs> peripheral viability of that with the Glyph of Haste thing, but I just want to emphasize that this is when I was really, really desperate to come up with some way that I could yeah. play this hero in a pub and not feel like I was destroying my team. I feel you. I've been there with Invoker. Well, what's hero. the backstory with this Lone Druid shenanigans and, and you? How many games do you have? Why? Why? Um, I have 360 games on him right now, and I have about a 60% win rate, although that dropped below 60 the last two patches when he was just got awful. Um, but I, I came from like StarCraft 2, okay, and so I wanted I. to play here that has like cool micro. And everyone always thinks it's like, oh, StarCraft, Meepo. But Meepo is really like, he's kind of macro, if that makes any sense. Yeah, like, it's, you, it's you like you have five like bases. Picture, it's like you have five then, bases. And it's macro, yeah, macro in two in two senses. One, in that it's in five places. Two, that, you know, like a keyboard macro, you press a button, a bunch of things happen all at once, and then that's that's the fight. And that's mm-hmm. how Meepo is. You blink on someone, you go, and then you get a kill. Yeah. That's, I mean, that's fantastic, but it's not super fun. No. I, I And, and it's, it's, it was really hard for me. I came over from StarCraft 2, by the way, as well, uh, Proud. I am a diamond yeah. random uh, okay. in StarCraft 2. And uh, yeah, I, that was inter- uh, immediately why I was interested in Visage, why I was interested in Lone Druid, why I was interested in Meepo, uh, why I was interested in those micro heroes. Because I looked at them as though they were micro, but I realized very quickly Meepo yeah. is, is much different. And Lone Druid was a lot closer to the micro that I was used to. With, say, yeah, yeah. I don't know, Blink Stalkers. It was similar to Blink Stalkers. Blink Stalkers Absolutely. had co- a cooldown, and I could blink my bear back to me, you know what I mean? Like, I really liked the, I don't know, the correlation. Well, that's, so, yeah. that's one of the main things about, like, Lone Druid harassing and laner. He's, just, he's such a good 1v1 laner. Is like, you have to get your bear up to hit something, and then as a projectile from, like, a tower is going at him, you blink right before the tower hits, and it avoids the damage. It's, like, it's mm-hmm. really similar to Blink Stalkers. It's super fun. And I yeah. played, uh, I was Masters Protoss, so. Oh, okay. Like, yeah, this is exactly what I'm about. Okay. Yeah, I was, I, I, I got to Diamond and Protoss and switched over random and stayed Diamond. But, yeah. I did. I did a bunch of cheesy shit to get there. I'll say that much. Four gate. It wasn't four <laughs> gate every like, single uh, game, but 
Like I like I like the flavor of the of the of the hero, the whole like nature is not for the weak shit. It's like it's fucking it's just manly as hell. It's like oh, it is it's a so brutal. Hero. And uh and the whole like Scottish accent kind of thing, I'm really into that. So he's he's pretty great. I like him kind of across the board. Is well, that why you play Luna? The, the Scottish that's accent. That's another reason. Although her accent, I don't even want to touch that one. Her, <laughs> it's just kind of sexy, dude. Is is all I've got to say. I, don't you think Luna's <laughs> the way he cycles just laughs and everybody gets silent? Am I the I, only I, one? I, I have no that. input yeah, on this. I don't. <laughs> I, there's something about it, dude. I don't know. Yeah, I'm at a loss. I use the Korean sound pack because I'm a freaking <laughs> terrible person, and so I'm. This is foreign to me. Oh, but I know funny. when we were at ESL, this is, I'll make a very short story. When we were at ESL, whenever Luna would get picked. Uh, at the tournament, one of the guys I was at the thing with, my friend Eric, he would yell, Luna is my Scottish queen, like, <laughs> loud enough that probably, like, our entire section could hear him, and uh, it's wild stuff. So, yeah, Luna, definitely Scottish. Oh, anyway, man. yeah, so, uh, Lone Druid is a lot of fun. I know I've made some attempts to play him after watching Proud play him, uh, you know, dozens of times, probably, at this point, and uh, I think so the hero's fun. really fun, but he definitely, like... You know, when we're talking about, like, Wisp being one of those heroes where, like, you could play 100 games of him and you'll see, like, noticeable gains every game. I think Lone Druid is a just as good example of that mechanic of learning where, like, you could play 100 games of Lone Druid or 360 games, whatever, and you're going to see, like, appreciable gains that whole time. Uh, I'm, so. like, 6 and 24 with Lone Druid or something <laughs> like that. I wish uh, we had it pulled up, honestly, and I will have my Dota buff. Can you, Cyphus, will you look up my Lone Druid win rate? This I don't know if I had Dota buff turned on at this point. I did. No, I, I just thought I was good because I, I think it was that, like, uh, logical fallacy thing where I had, like, one cool game where I did feel like a man because it does make you feel like a man. I completely agree, Proud. When you take a dude down with, with a bear. How many games do I have with him? How many? What's my win rate? Twenty five percent. Twenty five percent win rate. Win rate over twenty games. I mean, so. you're great. The hero's just bad. I don't know <laughs> yeah, it's not. It's the hero's just no. I am. It was As definitely. A disclaimer, I, I talk bad about the hero, but this patch will do have an eighty percent win rate. So if you you can win with him pretty well. Whoa. Okay. You just you just need to invest a few hundred more games. Yeah. <laughs> just just drop three sixty games into him. You'll find a way. <laughs> oh, it's crazy. Three hundred sixty games. That's. Uh, you know, that's actually what I was thinking is not that many games to be top. What what did you say your Lone Druid was top? Um, According to Dota this, Buff, right? Like, uh, it, I, I don't know right now. I think maybe 120 or something. So top 120 best Lone Druids, and you've only put 300 games into him. Like, I'd like to know how many games Bulldog put into Lone Druid. You know what I mean? I'm sure it's a it's lot a more than that. Oh yeah. Well, you never know, and also like they have a lot of lobby games which aren't countered, counted in yeah, which Dota are buff not stats. Counted. But yeah, I mean, I have, I don't know, not to tie everything back to Invoker, but I think I have probably around three hundred Invoker games between this account and my Battle Fury Smurf. Um, and hmm. yeah, like when you put that many games on any hero, I think like even if it's a quote unquote simple hero, you're gonna like notice things that other people don't notice, and you think at like a really high level about the hero. And I, I know that's like that's a super interesting thing about Lone Druid, um, especially because you not only do you get to itemize and think about one hero, but you get to itemize and think about slash worry about uh, another hero uh, effectively, yeah. although a hero that does creep damage, which that's actually a, a buff that I've heard from other people that would be significant and they think would be like enough to put him in the meta is to make the bear do hero damage as opposed to creep damage. Normal Have you thought of that proud as like a... Uh, do you think that would make him viable again? So the caveat that everyone puts to that is like, oh, well, if they did that, then he would do less damage to towers because creeps actually, uh, normal damage is just like, I think, 125 to towers and heroes 100. Oh. But if you just scaled that with also buffing demolish, then, I mean, yeah, that'd be great. The When people always say, like, Lone Druid, you get Radiance, etc. Um, part of the reason of that is that Radiance damage isn't uh, off your, like, normal attack damage. So, mm -hmm. like, Radiance damage isn't mitigated by the fact that you're doing creep damage. Maelstrom damage isn't. I'm pretty sure Bachelor damage and uh, MKB damage isn't. So a lot of the a lot of the items that you get on Lone Druid are like uh, you know things like Maelstrom and Radiance because they don't do your attack damage. So it would open up a lot of uh, other options. Yeah. So just like to go now into the practical stuff of what we're going to be doing in the game. What kind of build are you planning on going? I know you'll probably more to say because as Shadow Shaman, I'm probably just going to be going like pretty standard like mana boots maybe i'll buy an urn and then yeah, just like mana boots urn or bracer or something like that yeah and maybe like a little blink. bit of survivability and then yeah a blink 
or if stuff's going bad, I'll get a four staff and then I'll get eggs and then I'll yeah. get like a refresher. So, so I've had I've had a lot of opinions on Lone Druid. I haven't thought Radiance has been good uh, ever. I've only been justified in thinking that since um, since they made Entangling Roots not a unique attack modifier. Um, but I've I've been a big fan of Maelstrom Basher for a really really long time. But this patch I've since changed and I've started going uh, Hyperstone Deso. I think Deso is probably the best item on Lone Druid right now. But uh, you need some amount of attack speed to make use of the fact that they just changed it. So um, so let me see how much this is right now. You guys are smart, by the way. Uh, like listening to you guys talk about like this creep damage, hero damage. Wow, it's just like the minutia that honestly, so, like you don't really need to think about until you get to like a really. So the new battle cry on Lone Druid gives you ninety damage to your hero and your bear, and you know at level six having another hundred eighty damage total to work with is insane. So you want to build items that you know synergize with that. So attack speed is good. You know, get some multipliers up on that. Uh, 180 total and then you throw Desto in there as well and you've got like crazy amounts of minus armor also modifying your damage and it's just super super good mm -hmm. um, and it's on towers too so you gotta yeah especially Desto you... on a tower is pretty crazy dude this is uh, like proof how I know that I wouldn't like recalibrate on a smurf to 4k just listening <laughs> to you guys talk like this is how I know there's no way I could get to like 4k by recalibration damn you well, guys yeah. are all like like totally theory crafting over there i feel like i've never theory crafted before now <laughs> it's almost like that's the intention <laughs> i guess so oh my Is god simpleton uh, tuesday it, yeah it's called try hard thursdays <laughs> try hard <laughs> thursdays <laughs> yeah. it's called theory crafting thursdays or theory craft thursdays, theory craft thursdays. Dep depending on the know. week we have an ing <laughs> it does depend so what are you gonna build proud sorry so we're gonna go. We're gonna do phase orb of venom, and then hyperstone deso most likely somewhere with that a bassy in huh? there. Oh, okay. yeah. With a bassy well, I would hope so. Yeah. Well, yeah. you normally I like to do I like to do hyperstone bassy deso, and you normally get the hyperstone about when you start using rabid because then you have some real mana consumption you have to deal with, and your bear's armor starts to kind of taper off. So bassy solves your mana and gives your bear some armor and a little bit extra damage to go with the hyperstone. Okay. And then what do you do on Scylla? Um, I get brown boots, and then sometimes I get a ring of regen. A lot of people really like tranquils on Scylla, which is like pretty good. But um, tranquils kind of sets you back 200, which seems small. But on Lone Druid, you have no stat scaling, so you really just live and die by keeping your items relevant. Mm -hmm. um, so I like to stay with the stay with the ring of regen, and that gives you really all the health you need if you just kind of manipulate being in regular form and bear form. Um, and then you take that Ring of Regen later on into a Vlad's. And if you go with Tranquils, that sets your Vlad's back a good, you know, 300 gold. So and the Vlad's yeah. is really good because you get the Bassy early on on the bear. You have the Ring of Regen on your hero. And it's a pretty easy transition to go something like Hyperstone, Deso, Vlad's, AC. And you've already got pieces for the Vlad's and pieces for the AC. So they come real quick. Yeah, boy, it, this just made me think about how Dude. if Tranquils were disassemblable, that would be like the most game-changing buff to a lot of heroes. Like, now in Lone Druid, theoretically, you could do Tranquils early, disassemble them, and then you'd have two of the pieces for your Vlads when you're doing Vlads. Yeah, so, welcome, yeah, but welcome that would to my build uh, right before they made Tranquils uh, non-disassemblable. Yeah, oh, I didn't even re I didn't remember that they were. Yeah, it used to be, and it was super great. I would just go like Maelst I could go Maelstrom, Hyperstone for AC, straight Vlads, in like you know you'd farm another thousand two hundred, and you would have a Vlads. It was so good. Oh, I loved it. Yeah. All right. And well, you still have Tranquils. Yeah. It's great. Yeah. All right. So I think like we've gone gone yeah. enough. No, I am stuff, like so let's put this into practice, right? Yeah, I am fucking impressed with you guys' banter. Right. This Here's is probably what, what it sounds like when geniuses talk, dude. And like I like I don't really get the chance to be around that too often. So, wow. Well, hopefully, it Thank all like, you, pays uh, off and we win. It'll and be I'm gonna embarrassing be... if like we talked up all this. You gave us all these compliments, and then we just go. I'm sure it's like, st he, he's still gonna play a badass lone druid, win or lose. You know what I mean? Like he, there may I be. Hope so. Shit. Oh, yeah. and the, oh, by the way, this has been hyped for months. There's going to be thousands and thousands of people watching Proud. Yeah, so. no, I mean, I know I'm used to it at this point. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he's, exactly. He's, yeah, he's used to it at this point. Uh, <laughs> you said CLS. You playing a StarCraft team for your, or is it Dota? Oh no, it's 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 Dota. Oh okay, I wanted to. So I've got because I was like, I don't. We're actually on Thursday going to watch our replays from last week and go over them and stuff in the school library, which is probably my. <laughs> That's Most fucking favorite awesome. time of the week. That's fucking awesome. Sounds very official. All right, yeah, yeah let's great. let's go into the game. Uh, let's get you guys all queued, uh, uh, and uh, we'll see what happens. All right, sounds good. All 
All right, hello everybody, and we are back. We are in the post-game section now, happily. Although that game was going so well, I kind of wish it had uh, continued. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna say. Okay, you know how we always decide if it was a theory craft win, if it was an execution win, uh, or execution loss, or what? That was. Uh, I don't even know if that was theory craft. I just think that was a dude with a bear that knew the what the fuck he was doing, dude. Like, yeah, that, that was a game. It was a game. <laughs> that, that was crazy. And the and the places you put your wards, like, dude, there's like a little bit of fanboy in me after watching that game. Like, as we cast it, there there were moments of silence where we're like, dude, I just watch watching this guy last hit is is really fun. And he's like, yeah, it's it's pretty mesmerizing to watch him watch him last hit. <laughs> it was. <laughs> Last hitting on Loon Druid is actually like, so there, there was a time when I was trying to figure out exactly the best way to do it, because you need your bear hit and your hero hit to happen at the same time. But if you're like closer than, I think I measured out, it was like if you're closer than 300, you need to do, what is it, bear first, then hero. If you're farther than that, you need to do hero first, then bear. And that was a fucking train wreck. So I just talked to like someone who's better than Loon Druid, at, or better at Loon Druid than me. And I was like, is this really worth like my mental stress? And he was like, nah, man, just just let it go. You don't get last hit. You don't get last hit. Don't don't worry about it that much. <laughs> yeah, that that uh, that sounds like a lot of the really complex theories when people are like, oh, you know, for min maxing, people are think yeah. a little too hard. Like uh, I don't, I can't think of an example off the top of my head. I guess tread switching is like a microcosm of that. Although tread switching is important, but in some situations it's not. But people still do it. And it's like some things, like, it makes you feel good about yourself. Like, you're like, man, that was awesome. Like, I'm such a good player. But at the end of the day, like, it doesn't really make, like, a tangible difference. Like, maybe you <laughs> yeah. get one extra last hit in the entire game. But I'm sure yeah. somebody has tread switched and survived at one health before and been like, oh, yeah. I am the best at this fucking game, better than like, anybody. Yeah. I mean, that's where it counts. But, like, people, <laughs> like, the example I would use is, like, on AM, tread switch is important, but, like, I even just compulsively do it like once I have like a once I'm like level twenty and I have a manta and like all my items, and it's like you don't need to, you don't need yeah. to tread switch at that point. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah, it's probably even better to just stay on strength at all times. At yeah, that point. <laughs> yeah. So and then you get people like Blue that's like, okay, drop your Scotty, drop your mana boots, drop your this, drop your that. I'm gonna hit my mana boots and I I want to max yeah. this. All it's right, like, that's no, legit. Dude. I do that all the time. I'm like, hey, mana boot me. Wait, wait, wait. wait. Let me drop my bracer. Right, <laughs> yeah. Wait, 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 wait. Let me empty my entire inventory so I can get the maximum amount out of this. Yeah. And I understand and it. It's stolen once, and then hand. it's not worth it. Oh, dude, I, I've had my tranquils destroyed as a jungling axe. Uh, um, which you had a jungling axe that uh, you you were stacking right off the bat, and that axe was like, whoa, dude, thanks, and kind of just yeah. went in. I didn't think yeah. they were intended for him, but it worked uh, out. It kind of was. I was asking him because I don't play Axe. I like he's actually one of my. Well, like, Axe is Axe. Heroes. You know what I and, mean. But I was asking him because I don't know his like thresholds for what he can and cannot jungle. So I was like, oh well, can I stack the large camp for you, or like will you not be able to take it? And he was like, I don't care, dude. Just do whatever. And I was like, oh, <laughs> All okay. right. And so I was stacking the medium camp because I was like, that's safe, <clears throat> and like it's definitely not warded because yeah. they were warding, like they were blocking my pulls in weird ways. Like they didn't block it initially. And then they blocked it later on, I think. And it was just very disconcerting. Um, but yes, yeah, so I was just stacking for him. And I had, like, I messed up my warding because I was trying to focus too much on the lane. So I had, like, four observers on me at one point, And I was like, I don't know. I need to, like, I told Proud, I was like, hey, I'm going to leave. Yeah. I'm just going to go ward because I have all these that point. burning a hole in my pocket. But, but by the way, we were, we were like, I bet Ursi has some master plan for the reason he has four wards in his inventory. He probably wants to hold on to low vision right now and get high vision later on in the oh, game. That's, that's <laughs> me just going like, can we go? Can we go? Can we go? <laughs> yeah. Do you have Shackle? Do you have Shackle? Dude, there were so many moments in that game, Proud, that... Uh, your kill hinged on uh it oh god the bear entangling yeah. dude it was fucking like i was like is he gonna die there's a 20 percent chance this guy dies right now <laughs> there's a 20 percent chance he dies there again was a, there was like the one, one game in a tournament that i played that was just like the epitome of like why i've just i'm always kind of question picking the hero so i'm i'm fighting like an invoker in one lane and like we're at like the dire bottom tier one and I hit him, and I don't get entangled, and he turns on me, he cold snaps, I'm like, dying, like, ah, oh, shit, I gotta run. And so I run from the dire tier one bot 
down to radiant tier two bot, just like the like across the map. Do not get a single entangle the entire time. <laughs> He's one hit from killing me under under the radiant tier two, and I hit him like one more time right before my die, and it's a root, and he dies. And I'm like, you know what? I'm sorry, but statistically, that should have fucking happened at this point. <laughs> yeah, yeah uh, it's rough. But statistically, it can happen. That's the thing. Yeah. Uh, w- would you rather pseudo random with the bear? Yeah. 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 A- after after like you know min max and like pa pseudo random like you know five auto attacks on a creep and then go in and then like i'm like man if i could just do that on my bear i would be <laughs> such a good hero dude those people were probably arguing like what the fuck is going i thought lone druid sucked like why are we why are we getting squashed by this fucking lone druid uh, it was it was honestly impressive, uh, and I'm gonna say that that wasn't necessarily a theorycraft, uh, totally a theorycraft win. Although the shackle uh, was incredible with yeah, and especially you, against natures, yeah, well, especially against so natures. Or we oh yeah, you should playing. explain that. Sorry, I was just in such awe of the game. Explain yeah. what you guys were up against. So we got to safe lane. Generally, I know we prepared ourselves to have to off lane, but we lied to our I have our uh, party. I have 3000 games of demanding safe lane. We we know how to get it done. <laughs> yeah. But we just lied. We we're like, yeah, we've been playing this combo for like all evening. We have like five wins in a row. We have a system. Don't worry about it. Let us do a safe lane. And they and, probably um, were like, dude, that system is rad. Let's try it, man. Yeah. And <laughs> um, you guys made it look easy. Yeah. And so we got to do a safe lane, which is nice. But yeah, we laned against an offline nature's prophet and offline nature's does not fare well against us. Because, like, any time I was in, like, any time I had the ability to shackle, he was probably going to die. Yeah. And, of course, we had good communication. So, like, it wasn't first blood, I don't think. But I think it was the first time we killed natures. I want to say we had, like, that it was had, first blood. Yeah, maybe it was. Th- it might have it been. I think yeah, it was first but, blood. So it was, like, well, we had some harass on him. Like, I had one shackle earlier that brought him down, like, to, like, uh, two-thirds Where the bear was just fucking with him and you were last hitting with uh, the he- the Scylla yeah. or whatever? Yeah, yeah. That moment, uh, yeah. Times. Oh, so maybe it was the second kill. But anyway, it was like one of those things where like I was just hassling him off on the side, and I was like, "Proud, like come over here, easy kill." And then so like, if when you have good communication with your partner like that, it was, uh, it was easy kills. So definitely, nature's profit does not fare well against this lane. No, Although, he was profit, feeding. Pro- God, he was profit feeding. Is actually, he's actually good against like, against a uh, lone druid in lane. But once you add the shadow shaman, because like at, at the start, if he just sends trees on me, like I can't kill them fast enough. Yeah, and the trees actually do more DPS than my bear does, which is awful. Oh, um, wow. But yes, like I have to be fighting trees and like backstepping and throwing out attacks. So I, I do need the shadow shaman to go in there and like you know get the surprise shackle to win that lane. Yep, dude, it was so co- like there was a point you had you had killed him. You got the first blood on the nature's prophet, and he came back and he was sending trees at you guys. I'm like, this nature's prophet is just like feeding because you get experience from the trees. You yeah, get, you get gold little, from the trees. Yeah. You were getting last hits on the trees. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, as, as, as the lane goes on, Lone Druid has enough, like, you know, because you can't waste spells on trees, but you have enough right click to, like, actually kind of really muscle them yeah. down once you get, like, a quelling blade. Yeah, and then once I had, like, the level 2 lightning, I could burn them down with that. So, yeah, it definitely did not go well. Um, and, like, I think Nature's Prophet is not a hero that plays well from behind either because he's just, his stats are not such that he can live without having a bunch of items so once he like had a couple deaths in lane and nobody was rotating successfully then like we took his tower and it was just not fun i think a lot of our success was contingent on our communicating um obviously we talked about it earlier but communicating whenever i had ult i was like hey i have wards let's take a tower or when uh proud hit six or no when proud hit seven at we six like, right. minutes. At six minutes, yeah. he hit seven. When he hit seven, it was like, right, take the tower. And mm-hmm. it was just easy stuff. And it was like, you know, we'll take the tower. I would position my wards in a way such that... Um, I don't know if you guys took note of it, but... Yes, I did. Yes. When we were taking tier two bottom, for instance, I positioned my wards, because I saw a juggernaut in the vicinity. So I pos- positioned my wards close to the tree line, and I stayed in the tree line. And you waited so that the entire time. If yeah. he wanted to come kill my wards, which A, that guy had no farm, he probably would have just died to my wards at that point, honestly. You, you could have shackled but him and killed him? Exactly, I could have just come out and shackled him and killed him. Yeah, and I, other times, I would zone people with wards where you put them behind the tower, and then they can't come up to fight the wards. Which is what you did to the tier 1 dire yeah. bottom tower. So, uh, which was ward cool. positioning is definitely a big thing. And, and you blocked a guy from getting away with wards. It, it, it was, and then the big team fight, you put the wards just in the river mid. Yeah, it, it was. Kind of, 
um, to be fair. To be fair, I don't but, know. Uh, like we were talking about it for a second. I'm pretty sure. I mean, obviously that helped you guys win the battle, and we were talking about if you would have won without them or not. I'm not sure it would have been so decisive. Uh, yeah, without and I also, them. Like, so. I almost got Reaper Scythe that fight, fight, but I like uh, I fogged him by going uphill. Although it was daytime, so like fog is even weirder. But uh, yeah, and even like in the opposite direction, during our push to take Rax mid, I warded in a way that was inefficient. I was trying to block a path so that they couldn't engage on us as easily. But by blocking that path, um, I c- like half of my wards couldn't reach the melee Rax. Ooh. So that was like a big mistake on my part. Although obviously, like we had such ridiculous push. Like we had Deso. Proud, you went Deso AC, right? Those yeah, you, Des- Deso AC is the current build, in my yeah. opinion. And so, like, they we, we took towers in like a matter of seconds. And yeah, you so throw quick. it's like how much is that total? It's like seven and five. You've got 12 minus armor and a 12 minus armor plus wards kind of like hammer again. That's yeah. like super brutal. And then, like, when we were getting megas, uh, like, obviously, when we were getting megas, like, we could have done it at any speed, like, the game was over. But efficiency wise, like, we use your cooldowns on the top uh, tower and top racks. And then we had my cooldowns then, and I could like go down to bottom and ward because Battle Cry and uh, the other Lone Druid buff those have like a not insignificant cooldown, right? It's like forty five seconds. Rabbit is always up. Uh, War Battle Cry is uh, sixty seconds. Yeah. yeah. So like, if you can balance your cooldowns that way, it's really nice. Um, but yeah, I, I think like the game went swimmingly. I it, think was it was execution, execution and, and a theory crafting win. Yeah, Th- that's a great lane. If you've got a great lone druid, I mean, I mean that's a good lane even if you have a so-so lone druid, and maybe, yeah. or if you're uh, practicing the, lone the shackle druid. shot does actually kind of smooth over if you're not that great because yeah. there's, there's a lot of finer things about moving as lone druid or moving as two units at a time. But if someone's in place, it doesn't fucking matter. You just click on him, you win. Yeah. Yeah. So. I, yeah, I think one of the most complicated things on lone druid, as someone who's an amateur lone druid player, and when I watch you do it, that is really different to me. Is when you're running away with the hero. You are microing the bear to be attacking and or creep blocking the person, and yeah. that's something that, like, in theory, it's like, all right, well, obviously you do that. It's really like basic, but when it's in practice, it's like, I don't yeah, know what really I'm doing. Hard. Like, I'm accidentally moving about, backwards, and the thing about that that you actually like don't really think about is normally when you run away, since you're only focusing on your hero, you're just like clicking every little path you're gonna take. Mm-hmm. But in reality, you only lose so much efficiency if you just like right click on your fountain and leave it. Like you're still gonna run away. You know, you're gonna take the best path. Pathfinding is pretty good. You're not gonna juke much. But mm-hmm. if you just do that and then you just solely micro your bear, it's actually way easier than you would think. Oh, okay. Yes. Just yeah. it's like a lot of it is just banishing the heuristic that you have to like micro your hero. But like, no, you just go away and then do your bear. Yeah, and then the other part of that is like you knowing when to TP or to blink your bear back to your hero to block. That's like a really interesting mechanic that I yeah. think a lot of like amateur lone druid players could learn a lot from. Um, or using definitely. it, you were using it to farm the, uh, the the safe camp, the dire safe camp, and you killed the dire safe camp with your bear, and then you poofed it so you could kill the the lane creeps. Like it was just small little bits of efficiency that was so cool to see. Where it was like, yeah, I'm not gonna have my bear walk 300 units. I'm gonna teleport at 300 units so I can get a hit right now. So yeah, lone druid farming is is absurdly fast. Um, the old male deso, like you could get maelstrom, bassy, and deso up at like twenty minutes if you had relatively like free farm, which is like an absurd amount of time, honestly. Like it's mm-hmm. it's really really fast. Oh yeah, you, I mean yeah, yeah. It it was just solid all around. I think like pretty much everything went well. Like we had one feeding train where like we got overly yeah. aggressive and like it was after you took died. the tier one bot. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And then, like, we all dived a little, and then our mid-disruptor, which, that that was a whole thing. Yeah. Um, yeah, he, like, sure. came in to feed, and that was, like, a worrying point. Because at that point, it was, like, 7 to 0, or, like, 7 to 1. Yeah. And then we were just, like, yep, we just had, like, four deaths in a row. It was at so- the 8-minute mark. Proud was going to... Proud, uh, unfortunately, died, because uh, he, was, he was looking to grab the 8-minute rune. And I was, like, good for him. It could be a... You know, it could be. Oh, no, a... I was just trying to get out of there. Oh, like, you were just trying to get out of the there. Safest path, but the, oh. uh, yeah, the silencer like head, headed me off there. Yeah, yeah, I was yeah. Just a little for some kind of escape. The silencer. I thought uh, you were yeah. just going to get the eight minute, hoping it was like a regen or something. Like, <laughs> this is going to be nah, like yeah. free health. Yeah, it was unfortunate. Silencer was just like, I know exactly where you're going, uh, yeah. yeah, and got you. But I think that was your only death. 
I'm pretty sure that. Oh, was, um, I think yes. I, I think I. Oh no, I, I had one other much to uh, my just. Uh, oh god. Yeah. So right, I, okay. it was like up top going That's with right. that necro. We killed the silencer, but he held his ulti forever. So silencer got like his global silence off, and like three guys walk up, and I can't kill them quite in time, and I get uh, necro ulti. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that was right. And if you yeah, just you dropped your silence. Here. It's like Disruptor ulti has got a short cooldown. If you ever play Disruptor, by the way, guys, or if you just play anything, just use your ulti. Like, having your <laughs> ulti on cooldown, like, whenever anyone says, like, well, you know, they traded me for their ulti, like, I'm sorry, like, you don't get to pretend that death wasn't a problem. Like, trade <laughs> yourself for the ulti, like, that's what the ulti is there for. It's I know. like, well, I died, but he used a gun in his bullet. Like, like that's what, like, that's what the bullet's for, man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like when Ursi, like when Ursi blocked that, I think it was the jug off near the tier two bottom uh, tower, uh, where the guy was going to run through the trees and you're like, nope, serpent wards. And then he had to walk around your serpent wards and died, where it was like, is that a waste of his, you know, uh, ulti? Like, did he just waste his serpent wards there? And it's like, no, he fucking killed the guy. Like, yeah, <laughs> that's the point. Yeah, like, unless you get team wiped in the next, like, you know, 30 seconds, because, or unless you team wipe them because they didn't have their ulti in the next 30 seconds, like, that ult was useful. Yeah, especially yeah. Disruptor. Like, Disruptor ult's a relatively short cooldown. It's like yeah. 60 seconds. So, I mean, if you're like. Yeah, max, but yeah. Yeah, if you're like a Tidehunter or something, it's like, oh, well, we lose fights when I don't have ult. Or if it's a late game, and that's when you need to be conservative. But when you're a mid-disruptor, like, uh, I mean, that, that was all. I, I would not advise mid-disruptor. O only no, ult's really got worth wrecked. saving. Black hole, ravage. Beyond that, I mean, you know, get a kill. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, yeah. God damn it, that's a good point to end this show, I would say. Yeah, you, I use think your ulti. And uh, yeah, and crush face. If you <laughs> have fight, abilities, press your goddamn you... buttons. They're great. <laughs> buttons are awesome. <laughs> yep. Kills are nice. Winning games is fun. Lone Druid, not the worst hero. It, it worked out. We had a success overall. I was very happy with it. It was like eighty-five percent win rate right now. He can't be that bad. Giant Don't jinx success. It. Jinx it. it was a giant, <laughs> giant success. All right. Well, you can catch the video from this game on our YouTube channel. That is .ptv1. You can catch all our podcasts on defenseofthepatients.com. You can also find it on all of your iTunes and all of the podcast apps you listen to. Our Twitter is .p underscore show. I am at Ursinity on Twitter. Roland is at .p underscore Roland on Twitter. Uh, Proud, do you have a Twitter or not? No. Okay, all right. Well, He's like, no, fuck that. <laughs> you're probably better off. It's, uh, it's a real-time killer. You can also talk to us on r slash defenseofthepatients where you can you know find all our stuff. And let's see, defensethepatients at gmail.com is where you can contact us, in, unless you use Twitter, of course. All right, well, I'm Arsinity. This has been Theorycrafting Thursday, or Theorycraft Thursday, depending on what this is posted as. <laughs> and just remember, it's my theory, and it's probably your fault. <laughs> <laughs>